I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. It's that time of the afternoon, time for your YouTube tropical forecast, an update on what's happening out there across the Atlantic Basin and across the Eastern Pacific. Still fairly quiet, but we do have a few new developments, so I do want to get to that. Let's talk about the couple of systems that we have. No name storms right now. That is the good news. However, we do have two disturbances out in the tropics that could develop into something more. So let's talk about this one. This is disturbance number one. This one about 100 to 150 miles to the southwest of Bermuda. So getting close to Bermuda, it will likely pass very close to Bermuda over the weekend. Only about a 20% shot that it will develop into a tropical cyclone over the next 48 hours and just a 20% chance of that happening over the next five days. The reason, well, it's pushing north. It's going to be moving into colder water. Upper level winds don't appear to be very favorable for the formation of a tropical system. So it's not out of the question, but the chance is on the low side. So we will be watching that one to see if it does indeed get a chance to develop. But that window for development, a very small window because it will be pushing into a colder region. So not much of a chance for tropical development if it doesn't happen pretty soon. Now the one farther to the south, a little bit more interesting or a little more concerned about this one because now we have increased that shot for development into a tropical system up to 70% over the next five days. Just a 30% chance for development over the next 48 hours, but a 70% shot for tropical cyclone development over the next five days. Now this one is developing in the Eastern Caribbean. At first it was just a very disorganized area of showers and storms, but now we're beginning to see more of a area of low pressure starting to form here and if that can get stronger maybe tap into some of that warm Caribbean water out there we will have this tracking off to the west northwest it's going to push in between some of the Caribbean islands and also up towards Haiti and the Dominican Republic in between those spots and South America. So it will be pushing across central portions of the Caribbean over the next several days and it could get its act together. We could have another named system there. So a high chance, at least over the next five days for development of that system. So that is something we'll watch closely because it has a decent shot to make it across the Caribbean and maybe could be impacting portions of Central America, portions of Mexico, and we can't totally rule out that system possibly pushing into the southern Gulf of Mexico. Check out the water temperatures, our sea surface temps. They are still pretty balmy out there, still kind of feeling like bath water back across the eastern Caribbean where that tropical wave is expected to get stronger. Low to middle 80s for those sea surface temps there, low 80s for the western Caribbean and up into the Gulf of Mexico, upper 70s to low 80s for the water temperatures. So we still have that fuel necessary for these systems to form, get stronger and develop. Hurricane season certainly is not over just yet. So we're going to be watching that system in the Eastern Caribbean very closely because we could have Lisa over the next few days. We'll have to watch it. I think the development of it will be slow, but I think there's a decent shot that that could develop into a tropical storm as it pushes across the Caribbean. Next name on the list, if we do get Lisa, would be Martin, then Nicole, Owen, Paula, Richard. But at this point, I'm not really seeing any other areas of interest that will cause us to need to use that many names. Eastern Pacific, very quiet. In fact, the outlook for any tropical development in the Eastern Pacific over the next few days, well, it's not expected at all. 0% shot, but beyond that, there could start to be a little more action, so we'll watch closely. But the next name on the list for the Pacific Basin would be Seymour, but I don't see that happening at least for the next couple of days. With our climatology, our tropical climatology, of course, the active time frame or the busiest time frame for hurricane season, usually the month of September. So we jump past that. In fact, we are a few days away from wrapping up October, believe it or not, this year going by super fast. And we are going to sail into November where we typically don't get many tropical systems to develop. Very low chance of that happening. If it happens, it's not out of the question. We could still get a hurricane, tropical storm, but just the chances are starting to dwindle and get much lower every day, every week that we get closer to the end of hurricane season, which is November 30th. So at this point, no name storms, as I mentioned, no tropical storms to track, no hurricanes out there, but I think of greatest interest would be that wave, that disturbance in the Eastern Caribbean, because that one has the highest chance 
to get a little closer to us in Southeast Texas. So we'll be watching that closely and keeping you posted throughout the weekend and of course into next week as well. But guess what? We kind of have a big game in town this evening. We've got the World Series. So exciting. Starting this evening out at Minute Maid Park, first pitch 7.03 p.m. And we've been dealing with a lot of heavy rain surrounding the big World Series kickoff. So we've got the Fox 26 weather app waiting for you. If you don't have that downloaded on your phone or tablet, make sure you have that. You can keep track of the flood advisories, flood warnings, tropical updates, all sorts of cool tools on there. And of course, you can have radar on the go anywhere you are. Also, don't forget to check out my social media at Ramesha Shade TV on Twitter, Facebook at Ramesha Shade Weather and Instagram at Ramesha Shade. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the game. And of course, we've got to say go Astros.